believe that uh, every, every campaign had an opportunity to vet their candidates. It was done fairly, and it deserves the full support of the body. Thank you. Thank you. Still nothing. There you go. <laughs> Mario Martinez, District 3. I was the requested to be the new campaign spokesperson because there was no one on the nomination committee who was for a new. So I was an observer. I was allowed to speak by vote by the committee. Uh, as a delegate, I had that was given that right because I was there for new. And I agree with comments that have been made. It was the fairest process that they could have done. It was shared and it was done the Alaska way. That's all I can say. Thank you. I served on the nominations committee a couple times myself and I chaired it. It was a renewal of, new, of old friends and some new friends that I met. There were folks on that committee that were very strong supporters of Ron Paul, Newt Gingrich, Santorum, and Romney. All of them spoke passionately. All of them spoke openly. openly. All of them spoke fairly. And I think all of us had a chance to kind of do what's right for Alaska, and that is Look at Alaskans who are going to Florida to represent Alaskan Republicans. Those four candidates are Republicans, and so are all of we. I was really thankful for the opportunity given to me by my, my district chair to be able to be on that nom nominations committee, and I fully support the Ron Paul delegates, I fully support the Santorum delegates, the Gingrich delegates, and the Romney folks, and I would really ask that you all consider in good faith that we recognize these people to go forward to Florida and be delegates to represent Alaska. Thank you. The North Mike. Do I got to turn it? Well, I'm on. Brent Cole, 34, Alaska, uh, Nominations Committee. And uh, I fully support this slate of delegates that we worked with. But I would like to point out a uh, technical error or a uh, human error on the ledger there from the Ron Paul campaign. Uh, the delegate selected Andy Deering is listed as a Ketchikan resident. That's District 33, but he is District 34. So it was a typographical error. Thank you for noting that, sir. Anything else? Mr. Chairman, Berkeley I have from uh, <laughs> I changed your on District 18 now. I was on the nominating committee, I tell you what. This is my third convention, and yes, yesterday at the nominating committee, yes, we had our difficulties back and forth and arguments. However, everything everybody there was respectful, they treated each other with respect, and we arrived at a conclusion that was accepted by everyone at the, at the in the committee. Thank you for the time, Ron. Thank you. Seeing no one. Yes. Small in stature, big in spirit. Debbie Brown from District 30. I was on. I would like to speak on behalf of a second voice from the Rick Santorum uh, element of the party because I think it's appreciated when you concur, you know, with, with just a few of us here with such a large slate. So I appreciate having been, had the opportunity to work with this group on the nomination committee. I agree with everyone, and we did, we had a couple of bumps to start out, we smoothed them, smoothed right over them appropriately, and we, we were a great working operation to observe in that nominations committee. Thank you very much. I fully ask for everyone's support of this slate. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, point of information. Right now we are just voting on the delegate slate, not the uh, state electors and alternates. Is that correct, sir? We're, we're voting for the... My understanding, what we put before you, is the delegates and alternates, not the electors. Thank you, sir. Okay. okay. Point of privilege? Maybe. Go ahead. I, I think everybody that everybody here should know, Rex Shattuck, District 11, and I should have said this in my comments, I think everybody here should know that our co-chairs were absolutely instrumental 
and the smooth operation of both that
the elector for the Republican winner. Rex. Point of information. I'm Rex Shadow, District 11. Our understanding was, much like those going to the nominations committee for uh, delegates and alternates, we had certain numbers of, of, of forms that were put through to us. And we reviewed those and selected those based on that list with some geographic consideration and some uh, 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 relationship to age, gender, and uh, and I was unaware of the rules that that is one that you could put through from the floor. I thought historically that was something that came from the nominations committee. Uh, let me check the parliamentary based on precedent. I totally agree with you. Uh, Mr. Shaddock, the parliamentarian advised me that we need to repair our rules to make it a committee only because there's no provision that says that, it, that, can, that the nominations of four are not permitted. Uh, this, is from, this is Kyle Easterly from District 13. I'd like to make a point of information that Chris Nelson actually lives in District 13, and I think that's pertinent to know if we're trying to elect based on geographic diversity. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Yes, sir. Uh, Marvin Yoder, District 8. It uh, appears that the first two up there say both uh, District 24, and one's in Vienna and one's in Anchorage. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, for clarification, those should be numbers of votes received. Those are numbers of votes received in committee, not in geographic designation. Thanks for the clarification, sir. Ms. Stacy. Stacy Stone, District 19. Mr. Chairman, point of clarification. Article 5, Section 20, uh, point, excuse me, point C, I believe. Each person who desires to be elected as a candidate or alternate candidate for elector must submit a written pledge to the State Convention Nominations Committee that he or she will vote for the Republican candidate. <clears throat> for fall, and this one is cut off, and I apologize. But um, just as a point of clarification, yesterday in the nominations committee, the only uh, six forms that we saw are represented on the screen already. Okay. So the newly nominated ones, you need to submit a bit more immediately. Okay. Berkeley, I do, District 18. Now, all those votes you see up there, the nominating committee yesterday, we had a secret ballot, and this is the results of it, okay? And Thank everyone you. agreed with it. This is a, Anything? Point of clarification. Rex Shadow, District 11. Point of clarification. The nomination committee is adjourned. And as such, by those rules, it would seem it's difficult to reconstitute a nominations committee until the next convention. Ergo, we understand there may be those that would like to be submitted from the floor, but would we be out of the rules if we did? Okay. Uh, Parliamentarian advises that the, the nominations committee can be revived to conduct required activities that have come to the floor. So at this time, let's consider the following process. Let us allow the nominations committee to capture those forms and ensure that they're complete. We will move forward to the next item, which is the platform committee reports. And the first of those will be from the constitutional rights group. And I believe Lieutenant Governor Lehman plans to join me up here. I don't see him right now, but I'm sure he's here. There he is. He's too close. I was overlooking him. Thank you. Come on up and help run the process. And the committee chairs for constitutional rights come up. And uh, I would very much like to know what the ballot count is. Okay, also, all of the subcommittees, would you please bring your written documentation that you may have up for the parliamentarian so that we don't need to delay operations to do that? Mr. Chairman, point of order. Yes. Rick District 11. I move that we close nominations at this particular point in time. Thank
thank you for, for that. Is there a second to close nomination for electorate? Frank McQuarrie, seconds closed. Thank you. And, uh, yes. Let us extend the time to complete these next four tasks to uh, Let's see if we can spend the time 40 minutes from now to complete these four items. Thank you very much. So I need a motion, and then I need a second, and we need to vote. We extend the time. District 20, Edgar Lytle moves to extend the time. Is there a second? Second, Craig Johnson, District 21. Thank you very much. All in favor, would you please rise? Any opposed? Rise. Thank you. We're officially extended. Lieutenant Governor Lehman, it's the jurors to move the ball. Okay, I saw that we had a little bit of a love fest going on under nominations, and if we could do the same thing for platform resolutions, we'd get out of here before too late in the afternoon. Who thinks that can happen? I do. I'm going to say at the outset, we're going to take platform first and then resolutions. And there were seven subcommittees, and each subcommittee had two co-chairmen, women. And by my advanced math, that's seven times two. is 14 people who helped lead those, and each committee probably had on average probably close to 30 people, so we, we have likely more than 200 people involved in this. And there was uh, a lot of work done. I will say that I didn't agree with everything that was done, but on the whole, produced a good product, and uh, you can thank those people who worked very hard to make it happen. Assistant Ben is on task, and the first thing we're going to uh, take up is the preamble to the party platform, and uh, that comes from the committee with a recommendation that it pass. And it is very similar to the preamble that exists right now, with only minor editing to it. And I can't see where is it. Is it on the screen? It's on that screen, and the, what's on this screen? And so, okay, it's on, it's on two screens. Is there any objection to the adoption of the preamble to the Constitution? And hearing none, the preamble is adopted. That brings up the, the next section, the first section, which is jobs and the economy. The, don't the parliamentarian advises that I must ask him the actual non-objection. I do so, and I assume your response will be as favorable as it was to the, to the lieutenant governor. Thank you very much. What was that you said? <laughs> no, did you have to ask for it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Say you're from? <laughs> this is the forum. And I don't know if I have the authority to say yes or no. Mr. Chairman. Sorry. Um, Bethany Mark, District 24. I just point of order or question. Can you point out the differences of this uh, preamble to the previous preamble? Let me first solve a technical problem. The nominations committee must leave the floor, join the leaves to receive any uh, pledges to support Republicans from those nominated to the floor. Can you go back to your prior room, right? Yes. yes please. 
yeah. the folks who would like to be um, nominated for electorals or the, who had been nominated for the floor to go get the paperwork from credentials? I have, I have the them. Nominations. My belief is the nominations is the... I, I, I have them here. I think we're about to get them all filled out. Perfect. Okay. And the question is, can you point out what the issues were, please? Okay. In the mission statement, How's it going? the previous yeah, statement pretty much dealt with economic issues. There was the insertion of the phrase in the middle on the third line to defend the family. So much of our platform deals with defense of family and we felt it was important in the mission statement for the party that that be inserted where it is. The other changes I don't have in front of me, they were nothing more than minor uh, grammatical changes uh, in what was there before. You can pull up the other one and you can lay them side by side if you really want to look at them. There is nothing of substance that I, I remember. The next item up is jobs in the economy. If the co-chairman could join me, uh, that would be Lorraine Palmer and Mike Dunn. Great folks. Please give them Two were 
numbers out of that um, sequence to read, we support the free enterprise system and oppose government entities providing services that can be provided by the private sector. So we've struck out two words more economically. Mr. Chairman, Board of Information. Yes, sir. Ron Wendler, District 27. Yes, sir. I've been attending Republican State Convention since 1974, I believe was my first one. This is the first time that I've been presented with a uh, modified platform where the changes are not identified on the screen as to what was added, what was deleted, and what are new sections. I believe that most of the other reports are in that format. Could we postpone this one and get it in that format so that we could properly consider it? Okay. Uh, the report that was turned in does have it struck out in, in that format, so you're only looking at the changes which would be more efficient. Um, in the interest of trying to find some appropriate time, you can do something useful. Let me beg for the details. Can somebody go check, Stephen, go find out where the boat is. That's ridiculous. I'm sorry. Secondly, I would like to know, do we have a report that is just an exceptions report that shows the changes for a subcommittee? We have seven of these reports to do. Do we have... Because natural resources is in a position to do that. Please come up and let's see if we can get that report to where we can get people to feel comfortable with what we're doing. I thought that section one would be the easiest, quite frankly, because the changes were very minor. Um, and it, the changes, the new text is up there, and I would encourage you to read it. Uh, you know, yeah, and if you want, you can take your packet and, and do a comparison. If you want it broken down the other way, uh, let me just tell you this. I worked on this five hours last night till four in the morning, and I didn't have three of the reports till this morning at about 10 o'clock. Three others. So if you want to go back to that, we will be here tomorrow afternoon slogging through this. Nobody's trying to pull anything over at anybody. It's just we're trying to make it as convenient as possible. The people were in the committees. They're working hard to produce products. And, and, and these statements are in themselves fairly short. Section D of the Jobs and Economy to strike out the words more economically. Additionally, we have four new planks of which I will read. K, we oppose, we approve Alaska as a right to work state. L, we support. L, we support returning control of the monetary system to Congress as Article 1, Section 8 and 10 of the United States Constitution requires ensuring a sound money supply. And M, we support limiting government regulation related to economic development only to that which is absolutely necessary as outlined in the United States Constitution. public funds to bail out or subsidize private entities. I thought you'd like it. 
Okay. Mr. Chairman, from the with your eyes, sir. Uh, this is Lance Roberts, District 5. I'd like to make an amendment to the section there that's been brought up. Okay. All amendments must be submitted in writing. Those were the instructions yesterday. Has, has your amendment been submitted? No, I need to submit it before I make it. Can I make it and then submit it? You right? must. Yeah, the instructions were that amendments are to be submitted in writing. Right, but there's no, that doesn't sound like there's timing to the issue. Therefore, I could make the amendment and then submit that writing. Is that correct? The instructions are that amendments must be submitted in writing. And then you would move it and speak to it and have that opportunity. So can you make that motion and bring it forward immediately? Or? Okay, so I motion that we, uh, could you please bring the last screen up? Mr. Moore and Matt? Mr. Ben Moore? Yeah, sorry. Can you restate which section you'd like to see? Section M. Okay, so I just want to insert the word between the limiting and government of federal, since you're referring to the U.S. Constitution, is for limiting federal government regulation related to economic development only to that which is absolutely necessary as outlined in the U.S. Constitution.
1M by saying that you're in favor of inserting federal, please respond by saying yay. 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 <laughs> okay. All those that respond by saying no, they're opposed. No. Thank you very much. We'll move on to the rest of the So, the nays have it. Thank you. And therefore, the amendment fails. Are there further amendments? Under debate? Uh, okay. Uh, Neil Perry, District 29. I was on that committee, and we came, we wrote it to read, we support making Alaska a right to work state. Currently, we are not in right to work state. So, uh, I believe that's how we worded that was we approve, we support making Alaska a right to work state. So, I don't know if we're going to, to word, word spreading or not, but I, I think the committee, that was what the committee had approved, was making Alaska a right to work state. So I guess I've lost the motion to go back to what the committee originally put. Yeah. We did discuss that in committee about the making it, and we did just keep it simple and we just left it. We support Alaska as a right to work state. No, I don't think we, we did. That's that how our final notes reported it. <laughs> we approve Alaska. Okay, the right to work state. Okay, I stand corrected. There's a, there's a typo in there. That would be my fault. Thank you. So, so which is what you would say? What, what, what came, really came from committee? Like what came from committee was we support making Alaska the right to work state. The co-chairwoman agrees with that. There's a misconception that Alaska is a right to work state. We are not. Uh, so to approve uh, being a right to work state means we are going to So we support making because we need to get there. So that's the, that's the reasoning behind uh, adding support. We're not. That's how it came from committee. I believe there's no further comment on that item. Is there another item? Okay, dealing with this, at this time, all in favor indicate by saying aye for this section of the platform. Indicate by saying aye. Those opposed? Thank you. This section of the platform is approved. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, Rick Davies, District 18, also Chairman of National Defense Committee. We had three items on our agenda that were moved off of our agenda and referred to your committee. Unfortunately, due to the time in which we finished and the time apparently that you finished, we were unable to get those items to your committee. Uh, so I'm sending those to you now. There are little non-controversial items such as the right to bear arms or service. No, just let me get the right ones here. <laughs> Looking through my notes. Three items, Second Amendment, Patriot Act, and UN Small Arms Treaty. The committee felt by unanimous vote that these items were more appropriately in your committee and not ours, so we did not act on those. And Mr. Chairman, I'll provide you that information after the meeting. Would you make a motion to accept your report then? The second of the platform? Okay. It, it, the motion has been made? Okay. Mr. Chairman, I was not making a motion, so I was communicating from one chair to the other that items that were in our committee were referred to his committee, and I was unable to find them last night to get that information. Okay. So I'm just allowing, letting them know that those are now in your hands. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Production group, what platform item is ready to be presented at this instant? 
natural resources. Uh, natural resources co chairs, please return to the front of the room. Point of information, Mr. Chair. Yes. Ron Wendler, District 27. Yep. The three sections that were just addressed, I would suggest that the best way to handle that would be at the end of that committee report that we take up those three items from the floor. I suspect that we could vote them up or down in a matter of a few minutes. Because they, they, they're important items and they got dropped in the process, that would be an easy way to get back in. Okay, I, have, I don't understand what you said, but I assume it's very on point, and I suggest that folks follow that guidance. At this time, I'd like to ask the Natural Resources Committee to give us the amendments that they have proposed. There. From the abridged version, so you see it up on the screen. My name is Rebecca Logan. This is Brian Hove. We were the co-chairs of our awesome committee who should all stand up and be recognized because they worked for seven hours straight yesterday with two breaks. Excellent committee. So yesterday we started the day with four platforms. Um, under the natural resources, we added five. So we've got all of the changes, all of the new language is in bold and italics, and any changes we made uh, where we took words out, you can see we've got those crossed out. We have no amendments on the Secretary's desk. Nobody standing up to debate, and so the question that I, I can't ask today in the adoption of the plat platform component natural resources. All in favor of adopting it as presented and keep us saying aye. Any opposed? Thank you. The platform component is adopted. What is next that we can deal with? Under the new, what is the new item, E, 
Uh, all of it reads the same, except that there is an addition at the end that says, we oppose the distribution of contraceptives in public schools. And the final change recommended and approved by the committee is under item F, and this deals with treating uh, the education or the teaching of, of creation and uh, evolution. And so the final statement says, if evolution outside a species, macroevolution is taught, evidence disputing the theory should be taught. And it's just that last word changed from presented to taught. Yeah. Uh, Those represent the platform changes from the Education Committee. We did have two resolutions, which is it appropriate for you to know? Not right now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. May I address the under debate? I do have a, uh, an issue with number D. Name? Uh, this is uh, Tom Burton. Tom Burton, District 18. I have an issue with uh, D. Um, I believe that putting the word specifically to Alaska Natives is excluding, excluding others. I'd like to make the motion that we include the word all Alaskan instead of Alaska Native. So it would be, we support the teaching of Alaska's history and geography with appropriate acknowledgement and respect for all Alaskan people, culture, and language. Thank you. 
Barberini and with District 3. I want to back up um, Dr. Faith and what he said. I think the word native should be included there. And I want people who might be against that to consider the following. What if a group of Somalians came up and lived here three years? Well, they would be in Alaska and they could have them there for a culture, an Alaska culture that was Somalian. Thank you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's why I support Native. Now, if somebody wants to include the word pioneer or something like that. So to summarize, you object to, to the motion. I object to the motion. Yeah. I support Thank you. the Thank word Native. Mr. Cutler. In the interest of time, I, I need to interrupt this process just for a moment to make a motion of apology on the floor. Uh, on the, on, can we come back to that when we're not in the middle of the debate? Well, the problem is that Lisa Murkowski is leaving in 25 minutes, and I just think it's timely, and we have a wound uh, in this room. You're violating the rules. You're off topic. I will allow you to come back later, not now. I'd like to keep the, the we, context we've, we've, we've invited her to, to speak, and we would like to apologize and ask. No. I'm sorry. You hit burned your bridge. Well, I didn't do that. Well, we're not in the midst of an amendment for sure, and not in the midst of a report for sure. So please, you give the mic to someone else. Yes, sir. Richard Kohler, District 14, and I rise in um, support of the amendment or F of the article as written, as in written. opposition to the amendment. Thank you. Is, it, is there any further comment to the issue? Hearing none. All in favor of the amendment as presented, indicate by saying aye. aye. All, all opposed to the amendment, which would put us back to where we were, indicate by saying no. no. Thank you. We're back to the original text. Now, you had a comment for something else in the, in the, in the body? Correct. I wanted to move to section E. Please. Yes, go ahead. I believe that uh, there may, my name is Jason Kerman, District 13. I believe that if an individual uh, here is, uh, there's two separate issues in uh, uh, Section E. One being that we support uh, requiring active and written parental consent before teaching sex education. Uh, I don't think there's that many people here that would disagree, but there are also things that follow that don't pertain to the actual parental uh, consent. Those are two different things. So if one were to disagree with E, they would also be disagreeing with two, three different um, actual uh, issues that should be separate. I believe that, that should, the parental consent should be separate from the actual curriculum. And what do you want us to do about it? I believe that the parental consent should be separate than the actual curriculum and requirements of, of So your motion is to make that a freestanding item by itself? Correct. Is there a second? Second. Any further debate? Hearing none, is the body in favor of dividing E into two topics? All those in favor indicate by saying yes or nay? Yes. yes. Those opposed, no? No. Thank you. Appreciate your input. And you have a question. Uh, my name is Andrea Wisden, and I'm in District 31. I was on this committee, and we discussed the ending of E, but the correct wording should be that we also oppose the distribution and availability of contraceptives in public schools. Well, we might oppose their availability distribution in Dr. Bebo's school, too. Could you, for the benefit of the secretaries, could you identify yourself? Andrea Wisden, District 31. Can, can you What it should say and what the committee approved was we oppose the distribution of contraceptives in public schools. And their availability. That wasn't what I had in my notes from the... We yeah. talked about distribution. 
No, my recollection, Bethany Markham, District 24, my recollection was that we replaced the word availability with the word distribution. That's correct. You agree with it? Just accept that as a correct? Okay. Seeing no further suggestions, all in favor of adopting the education report as presented at this time, and keep saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. no. Thank you. The ayes have it. And that section is adopted. Brings us up to section four, which is health and family. Uh, may I make a motion to suspend the rules for five minutes so I can make this motion of apology in a timely way before Mikowski leaves, before Senator Mikowski leaves? Do I have a second? The motion to suspend the rules has been made by Mr. Cover, has been properly seconded. All in favor of suspending the rules and giving him the opportunity to go off agenda and keep my standing. All opposed, please stand. Okay. No, but you might be there. there. I'll make my motion of apology, first of all. As an organizer for last week's for Round Paul, I want you to know that I did not ask for any kind of rebellious action like what occurred last night. I was actually taking a nap when it happened because I was exhausted. Some people had talked about doing Senator Murkowski because they were upset, and I advocated that if you did not feel comfortable with that, with her speaking here, then the right thing to do would be to leave the room, or if you really want to protest, you could sit with your back. But I thought that was completely inappropriate, as do many of the people in Alaska around Paul. And I would ask that we invite uh, Senator Murkowski, who I've spoken with, uh, to take two to five minutes to address this room before she has to leave. And um, that all those who are unable to give her the due respect that any guest speaker should have would please leave the room and give her that respect for five minutes, give this body that respect, and heal a wound for the Republican Party. So I have a second for that. are raw 
the emotions are as high as they can possibly be. And we leave splintered and fractured with wounds that are still open. And it's hard to get that work done that we all need to do as Republicans and Alaskans when we don't allow for that coming together. And that's hard to do. It's just hard to do. <coughs> Last night was difficult for all of us. My concern was not for me. I put myself out there in front of God and country and said, take your best shot at me. And I'm still standing. But I was very concerned about a gentleman, a Republican leader, that I had asked to come to Alaska to speak to us, to share his thoughts. And it troubled me that he might leave with an impression about Alaskans that was wrong. I think what he saw, though, I think what he saw is that there are passions here. And there is an independence, and there is a freedom of expression, and that is all good. But as we express ourselves, let's do it with that respect. And I leave you 